The next thing that we're going to talk about will be the exogenous lipoprotein pathway. And this pathway utilizes chylomicrons as their central lipoproteins. Now, this is the pathway that ultimately is responsible for transferring the fats in our diet to the cells of the body. And so let's begin by talking about how we form these chylomicrons. So let's suppose we ingest a meal rich in fat. The fat ends up in the lumen of the small intestine where it mixes with bile and that emulsifies the fat and ultimately that allows to break down the triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. So the enterocytes of the small intestine are able to absorb the fatty acids and the glycerol and cholesterol and fat soluble vitamins into the cell. And inside the enterocyte, this is where we begin the formation of chylomicrons. So we begin forming an important structural protein known as apolipoprotein B48 or simply ApoB48 in the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the enterocyte. At the same time, within a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we convert cholesterol into cholesterol esters and we combine fatty acids with glycerol to form back the triglycerides. And now an enzyme known as microsomal triglyceride transfer protein combines these lipids with the apolipoprotein B48. So this enzyme is important because it loads the cholesterol ester, the phospholipids, the triglycerides, and the fat soluble vitamins onto this apolipoprotein B48. So this apolipoprotein B48 is important because it gives the scaffolding and stabilizes the structure of the chylomicron. And once we form this chylomicron, we call it a nascent chylomicron because it's not yet fully functional. So it's an immature nascent chylomicron. So this nascent chylomicron basically contains triglycerides and cholesterol esters within the core. It also contains fat soluble vitamins and phospholipids and apolipoprotein B48. And so then uh, this is then released into the nearby lymph vessels and that ultimately travels to the thoracic duct and this empties out into the systemic circulation. So it ends up in the plasma. And so once these nascent immature chylomicrons end up in the plasma, we have these circulating HDL molecules which momentarily associate with these structures and the HDL essentially transfer other important lipoproteins, apolipoproteins, such as apolipoprotein E and apolipoprotein C2. Now apolipoprotein C2, as we'll talk about in more detail, is actually a cofactor for an important, pro uh, for an important enzyme known as lipoprotein lipase. And apolipoprotein E is an important molecule because it allows the chylomicron to actually attach onto receptors within the liver cells. And we'll come back to this at the end of the lecture. So once we travel, uh, once we transfer the apolipoprotein E and apolipoprotein C2 onto the nascent chylomicron, this confers functionality to the chylomicron. And so now we have a fully functional mature chylomicron. And now these mature chylomicrons move into the capillaries of peripheral tissue. So specifically, they end up in the capillaries of adipose cells, of skeletal muscle cells, and cardiac muscle cells. So if we eat a meal that is rich in fat, our pancreas produces a bunch of insulin. And insulin actually acts on these cell types and it stimulates them to up uh, to upregulate the expression and increase the production of an important protein, an important enzyme known as lipoprotein lipase, LPL. So lipoprotein lipase is then released by these cells into the capillary and it attaches onto the endothelium of the capillary. And so when the mature chylomicron moves through the capillaries, the lipoprotein lipase acts on the triglycerides within the core and it transforms the triglycerides back into fatty acids and glycerol. 
So the fatty acids are absorbed by these cells. In the adipose tissue, it's stored for later use. In skeletal muscle uh, tissue and cardiac tissue, it's used to produce energy molecules, ATP molecules. Some of the fatty acids, however, end up in the bloodstream. And so albumin picks them up and carries them to other peripheral cells of the body. The glycerol that is produced actually just dissolves in the bloodstream and ultimately is picked up by the liver. And the liver utilizes that glycerol to form glucose molecules via gluconeogenesis. It can be used in glycolysis. It can also be used in lipid synthesis. So once we break down the majority of the triglycerides, we essentially form something called a remnant chylomicron. And a remnant chylomicron, over 90% of that initial triglycerides have been transformed into fatty acids, which in turn has been picked up by adipose tissue and muscle tissue. Once we form these remnant chylomicrons, HDL molecules, then take back the apolipoprotein C2. And so now we only contain apolipoprotein B48, which was synthesized in the enterocyte, and we also contain apolipoprotein E, which is given by that initial HDL molecule. And so now, this uh, remnant chylomicron goes on and attaches onto receptors on hepatocytes in the liver. So we have receptors on hepatocytes, such as, for example, the LDL receptor-related peptide that associates with apolipoprotein E. So again, apolipoprotein E is needed to actually reabsorb these chylomicron, remnant chylomicrons into the liver. And once in a liver, the remnant chylomicrons associated, uh, associate with lysosomes and the enzymes in the lysosomes digest and break down everything within uh, those chylomicrons. So we convert cholesterol esters back to cholesterol. We break down the triglycerides back to fatty acids and into the glycerol. And we can break down the apolipoproteins into amino acids. And all of these can be reused and recycled by the liver and by the body. So to summarize, we see chylomicrons are the central lipoproteins of the exogenous lipoprotein pathway. This is the pathway that's responsible for transferring dietary fats, so triglycerides, cholesterol, and fat-soluble vitamins to the peripheral tissues of the body, specifically to places like the cardiac tissue, the skeletal muscle tissue, as well as our adipose tissue.